Hi, everyone. We'll just give another uh, minute or so for people to show up. Um, you know what? While we're waiting, I'll show you my nursery. Hopefully, I won't knock things over. <laughs> okay. So, for those of you who recall our greenhouse, hi, Kathleen. <laughs> It was right there, and then the winds knocked it over. We fixed it up. The winds knocked it over again because, you know, it was too damaged, so we sent it back. Um, we're getting a refund. And so this area here is, um, you know, my family, we're all like artists or scientists. Basically, and so this was where we had our propane kiln. Um, was it last year, two years ago? Two years ago, we dismantled it and gave it to a nonprofit organization that helps at risk youth uh, recover, you know, claim their beautiful inner selves uh, through art. So we're turning this into a new. As you see, we have a lot of ceramic uh, and glaze buckets underneath. <laughs> We're turning this into a nursery. Uh, we are going to, for now, today, we're going to put some plastic sheets on these two walls to help when we water the plants and put all the heat lamps on. And as you see, we only have a few on now. They're not all on right now. Um, so when we water the plants and put on the heat lamps, it'll help maintain the environment. But we're keeping this area open because this isn't a greenhouse. It's a nursery. <laughs> and we have a door that goes through there. Anyway. Um, and... As things, I'll give you a proper tour later when, you know. Oh, I unplugged. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> So after we have everything, oh, as you see, we enjoy archery. <laughs> after we have everything oh. set up, um, I do have a couple of small pop-up greenhouses that uh, we had to mail order. They're going to arrive um, uh, in a few days and then once we have those up, all the sprouting I'm doing can go from taking up half my kitchen counter to coming out here and the kombucha production can go from fermenting in the kitchen to out here and the, um, uh, the kimchi can go from being in the kitchen to out here. <laughs> and, and I'll, you know, if you guys want, I can teach you how to do all that. It's not rocket science. Uh, one thing to remember, any recipe that has been like in common use for any culture, it's going to be easy to make. It's, you know, because everyone made it for a reason, that it's easy to make and it satiates. So um, I'll be happy to teach some of that as our summer goes forward. Phew. Okay. So... Um, thank you all for coming back today. Again, my apologies about 
yesterday, like I said, leave it to me when there's like nothing happening anywhere to double book myself. But uh, that sweet little dog was, you know, needed rescuing and that was the time they needed us to come out and rescue her. She is like already acclimated. Like we have been her family forever. She is so cute and just jumping around and playing. Uh, a little occasional drama between the cat and the dog, but they're like, you know, they're figuring it out. They're figuring it out pretty good. So, um, you know, I'll, uh, at a future time, when the dog's more acclimated and less uh, PTSD, I'll have her come and join us. Let's see. Oh yeah, I'd be thrilled to teach you guys how to make kimchi and kombucha. They're like so easy. And at this time, especially when we have to like really take care of our immune system and our gut health, you know, they're really, really, uh, you know, no brainer recipes. Okay, so <laughs> if you go on my Facebook page, I already have like a ridiculous amount of photos and videos of our sweet little dog. We don't know her name yet. We're getting to know her as a soul and a persona before we shoot, you know, label her with anything. Um, but as soon as we figure out the right name and she responds to it, um, I've found with animals, when you go to name them, I might try all these names, but you'll hit a certain name that resonates with a chord and they'll respond to it. And that's when you know it's a mutual name. Until then you can call any name and they're like, yeah, that's what the humans call me. So we're, we're looking for that mutual connection. Um, so, let's talk about sacral chakra. Sacral is literally my favorite chakra. Um, I mean, I love all the chakras. I even love the chakras in my arms and my, you know, my back. Like we have thousands of chakras in our body. Oh my God, my hair is out of control today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been here playing with the dog in the garden. And then I went, oh my God, I need to get ready for the live stream. And I did not have any time to like fix myself up. <laughs> so, so anyway, this, <laughs> you know, please forgive me if I look wonky. Not the first time won't be the last. Um, the sacral chakra I love because it's um, your gut instinct. It is like the easiest way for your guides to get information to you. So those of you who are trying to learn how to communicate better with your guardian angel, your soul, your past lives, people you love who passed, your guides, your guardians, God, anyone, your sacral chakra for most people is the easiest way to start that. Um, and we're going to, I'll give you guys an exercise and a little a meditation for that. So when you first start communicating with anyone, you know, we often were filled with self-doubt um, and we reject everything that comes through. So it takes whomever is trying to communicate with you, including animals who are living or, you know, the plants around you. It takes them a lot of effort to get a very tiny message that you then are like, Oh, I must have made that up. Block, block, send it back. So when you open up your sacral chakra, it is so easy for them to send messages through to there. And you're like, my gut instinct is telling me. Like you all know, as well as I do, that whenever you go with your gut instinct, then things go well. And when you go against your gut instinct later, you're like, oh, I knew better. Now you can't blindly follow your gut instinct because we start interpreting and then you're like, oh, my gut instinct is telling me. And then you go complete opposite to what your gut instinct is telling you. So, you know, like I've had people say, oh, my guardian angel took me into a situation that ended up being so hard for me and so terrible, but I learned a lesson. I'm like, well, 
why did your guardian angel take you to something that was so hard for you? I don't know. I guess I had a lesson to learn. And I said, and do you feel like the lesson was worth the trauma you experienced? Well, it was a lot more trauma than I thought I should have had, but I learned this lesson. And I were like, how big was the lesson? Oh, you know, like that big. So in that situation, a lot of times the person is just like blindly following what they think their gut instinct told them, but then they're not like communicating, working it out, helping the path brighten ahead of them. So just remember that I've done it. I had one time where I thought I was on the right path and every obstacle in the world kept appearing before me. And I was like leaping over the obstacles, moving them, going through around them. And you know, it, by the time I stopped and went, wait a minute, maybe I have the message wrong. It was like a lot of time later. And I was like, when I look back on it, I'm like, my gut instinct kept sending me this way and my brain was interpreting it to go this way. I let myself get in the way of the message. So working with your sacral chakra, I'm sorry, I know I keep playing with my hair. It's driving me nuts because it's so like, ugh. Uh, working with your sacral chakra is not an automatic, oh, anytime it tells me to do this, I do this. It is like um, a way to communicate with those who know more than we do. And they're trying to help us have our healthiest, most joyous life and stay on the life path that takes us to the lessons that we need to get to um, and to the experiences and the people we need to get to uh, in the best, healthiest, happiest, most love-filled way possible. So your sacral chakra, like I said, I love it. Um, the sacral chakra is the seat of inspiration, creativity, and birth. Now, for men and women, we often think of it in a sexual way, or a lot of people do. I actually never did, which is, so it's funny to me when people think of it only as sexual. Um, because, of course, the male seed and the woman's womb are there in the sacral chakra, and it's all about creation. So, yeah, that fits in there. And, um, you know, certainly if you're sexually active, waking your sacral chakra up can give you like an extra good time. However, that's one component of it. When we talk about creative birth and, you know, communication, we're talking about in every level. So don't box yourself into, you know, just sexual. Um, think about becoming the artist of whatever you're focused on. Think about inviting your guardian angel and your guides of the non-physical to give their advice on whatever it is you're about to do. Think about incorporating your dream state with your creative process so that you can have true inspiration and then invite divinity to come in and amp it up. That's what sacral chakra you know, really gets into. It's about getting out of your head and totally losing yourself into the moment so that the best of all can happen for you. It's very, very powerful. So for those of you who don't really know what chakras are and, you know, don't feel bad if you don't, that's why you're here to learn. Um, in last week's root chakra class, Leah um, posted in the comments some beautiful images of chakras. And um, so chakras, a lot of people see them as like balls of energy in your body. They are actually uh, the energy, the light that comes from them is the, uh, the emanation of the chakra. The chakra is like areas where a lot of lines of energy are crossing, ley lines, so to speak, in your body, uh, or, you know, all around us, but today we're focusing on these. There are ley lines that cross over each other, and wherever they cross, they make a spark of energy that we see as light. So if you have, like, 300 ley lines crossing in your sacral chakra, uh, and that can be physical energy, like veins, arteries, you know, 
uh, organs, stuff like that. And it can be uh, energetic, you know, like spiritual energy, emotional energy, intellectual energy. Um, they, you have so many that they all spark. And because they're all sparking at once, oh, here comes Black Cat. <laughs> because they're all sparking at once with a specific kind of energy that's relevant to that physical part of your body, we see it as a specific color that, well, come here, kitty, come here. Yes, yes, you're very talkative too. Come on, up here. So we see it as a specific kind of energy that's relevant to the frequency that it's working with. Um, the chakras were originally diagrammed by um, Hindu monks long, long ago who had total sight. They could see aura, they could see other dimensions, they could see non-physical and physical, and they could see inside the body, the energy. So that's why you're like, oh, well, the root chakra, which is red, is connected to the red auric field, which is the closest part around the body because it's the most physical. Here's Twinkle Toes, AKA Black Cat. Um, so when you see someone with a lot of red in their aura, that means that they're very connected to their root chakra and that's emanating the most. And it means they're very grounded, dependable, reliable, earth connected. If I were to start a small business, I would want someone like an accountant or a lawyer with a lot of red in their energy to be my business partner because I'm super inspired and while I love being in touch with the earth I'm not always as uh, grounded as I could be you know very few business plans have my angels told me that I should do this so therefore the business is going in this direction it's good to have someone down to earth to support that. So if you have someone who has a lot of, um, you know, purple in their energy, that's someone who's very connected to high levels of spirit and they're high up in their crown chakra. So this is someone that will be like really connected with divine messages, divine guidance and, um, and they're also going to be living more on the outer layers of their energy field. Um, but they're going to be, you know, if they have a little red in there as well, then you know they're also very grounded. And that's like, those kind of people, powerful. Um, so that's where these working in your different energy centers also lets you know what kind of energy you're working with. And if you're like, and you're like, how do I know? Well, if, like I said, sacral chakra is my favorite. I love it. So I know that I work a lot with my sacral chakra energy. People are like, oh my God, when you did that root chakra, it really resonated with me. Then you know that you're kind of a grounded person. Or if you say, I never felt that way before. Like I never felt so grounded before. Then you know that you work a lot with higher energy, you know, higher chakras and maybe a little more root chakra is really good for you. Later, when we go to working with our crown chakra, some of you say, wow, I opened to things I never even imagined. Normally I work with animal spirits or shamans, or I love gardening. Then you know that you're a very grounded root chakra person. And now that you're opening up your crown chakra, you're getting ready to really amp up your personal power. So you'll be getting twice as much energy to work with. So again, that's why we're working with all these chakras. Um, okay, so sorry, I, I'm so passionate on this subject. <laughs> the more you get to know your energy centers and the energy flow, the easier it is to get out of your, uh, your ego, your sense of self, the disbelief stories that you tell yourself, the boxes that you put yourself in, the re states of reality that you were told by the outside world that you accept as your personal story. 
and it allows you to get into your own natural flow of truth and what is relevant inside you that you can then allow to emanate outward. Right. So last week we worked with the root chakra. Don't you wish you could do that? Oh my God. So jealous of cats. So last week we worked with our root chakra. And um, if you haven't yet, please go back and watch that video. This week we're going to work with our sacral chakra, activate it, and then we're going to invite our whoever of the non, and you know, we'll open up first and set our safety parameters. Um, activate the sacral chakra, and then we'll invite anyone who normally tries to communicate with you through your gut instinct to come in and connect with you. Okay. And they may chat with you. They may give you an emotion. You may get memories like rise up like, oh, I forgot about that time when I logic dictated I do X, but my gut instinct told me to do Y and I did Y and that worked out. So I was so glad afterwards, you know, like you never know, or you might just get a sense of feeling or comfort. Whatever you get, accept it, acknowledge it and accept it. And then we're going to activate our root chakra and then place our sacral chakra on our root chakra and let the power of the root chakra and all of the earth connection support your sacral chakra. Then we'll reamplify our connection to the divine and whoever is communicating with you. And you might get more coming in or someone else. So whatever comes in through the crown chakra to your now very supported sacral chakra, we'll see what we get. And then I think that'll be enough. <laughs> that'll actually probably take us to um, 1230. It's 1122 now. So probably all together, I know it's somewhere between 12 and 1230. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to be sort of spaced out. Um, During this time, if you have any questions, feel welcome to type them. Uh, I don't have my glasses on, so I'm legally blind. I am like blind as a bat. So I can't read your questions now, but after the meditation, I'll, I'll read them and answer. And then um, yeah, OK, so I'm about to get spaced out myself. Feel welcome to be relaxed and comfortable, you know, if you want to lie down, sit down, or if you're washing dishes. It doesn't matter when you do these exercises if you're in proper meditation pose or if you're doing, um, you know, folding laundry and stuff. Like sometimes doing uh, little tasks that occupy your logical mind invite your energetic mind to open up even more. So just whatever you're comfortable with, go ahead and um, enjoy. It's okay if your eyes are closed or if they're open and kind of spaced out. Um, you know, I'll tell you, I get some of my best messages when I'm doing manual chores. And of course, every time I take a shower, someone comes through with stuff. I'm like, really now? Because I'm not taking notes in the shower. Um, so uh, get to know for yourself what works for you. Okay, so allow yourself, invite your body to relax. Um, from this point forward, there is no need for you to um, manage or control your body. Whatever actions we take, we invite our bodies to manage for themselves. After all, your body has been breathing your entire life. All of your inner functions have been working without you managing. So we don't need to micromanage the meditation process and the energetic connection. The more you just relax and give your body permission to do what it needs to do or wants to do and invite your guides your friends of the non-physical to come through and do what they wish to do. You just get out of your way. 
the easier it is to just receive messages. If you find yourself spacing out during this meditation, um, don't worry because uh, if you go along to a certain point and then space out and then later we pick you up on the way back, that happens sometimes. That's just uh, the frequency became a little higher than what you're yet comfortable managing, but with continued practice, it will become easier. And you know what? Before we go anywhere, I need to run and get my power cord. So relax and breathe. Uh, weird, my battery was full and now it's suddenly close to empty. So anyway. Well, I'm glad I noticed that. That's so weird, but that happens sometimes when we're doing energy work. Go. Um, that sometimes, uh, and you'll experience this through your life. Sometimes when you're doing energy work, electronics can just like drain all of a sudden. So that's one of the ways I know that I guess my guides are all showing up. <laughs> um, uh, those of you who've known me for a while know that like I've burnt out multiple video cameras and a couple of laptops and a couple of cell phones over the years. So you know, life gets weird when you're energetic. <laughs> um, and talking about gut instinct, before I started this, I got the message, plug it into the power cord. And I'm like, well, no, all of my plant lights are on. I don't want to take away plant lights on a cold, cloudy day from the plants. And, laptops fully charged. I'm not going to do that. I went against my gut instinct. I went against the guidance I received and look what happened. So uh, there's a nice little lesson for us all. <laughs> okay. So yes, we're plugging. Oh my God. I was literally at empty. That is so weird because this battery was 100% fully charged just before we started. Okay. Uh, twinkle Toes just jumped on the roof. <laughs> All right. So back to us. Give your body permission to relax. And... Um, is charging. Give your body permission to relax. Give your mind permission to relax. And from this point forward, think of your energy as like it's an hourglass. You have your crown chakra that rises up and goes out very, very high to the divine. And you have your root chakra that goes down and spreads out very wide and deep into earth's loving embrace. And in the middle, you got your little chakras, the middle part of the hourglass. We're going to be playing with this shape in future classes. 
but for now we're going to stay with the hourglass. Invite your feet to relax. Invite the bottom of your feet to relax and any energy that's in your body is welcome to flow down through your body, down through your legs, down through your feet, down through the bottom of your feet, deep into earth. And as you do this, you notice your root chakra very naturally, instinctively, automatically spreads out wide and deep, deep into earth and wide out, giving you a beautiful, solid base of support for all the work that you're about to do. Wonderful cone of energy spreading out. You can invite this energetic cone to spread out as deep and wide as it wishes and to adjust on its own as your energetic needs require so that you always have a beautiful base of energy to support your meditation needs. All of the energy is flowing through your body, down through your legs and your feet deep into earth. You'll notice the top of your head automatically, very naturally and instinctively becomes light and airy. As your crown chakra opens up high and wide, beautifully supported by your root chakra, your crown chakra can open up all of that delicious cosmic divine multi-dimensional energy comes flowing in through the top of your head filling your mind and down through your neck filling your body down through your legs your feet deep into earth invite your crown chakra to open up as high and wide as it needs your body knows that your root chakra should always be deeper and wider than your crown chakra is tall and wide. And you can play with your crown chakra. You'll notice with your permission, whenever you adjust your crown chakra, your root chakra automatically, naturally adjusts itself to give the perfect support for your crown chakra to receive all that beautiful energy. You'll notice as you open your crown chakra wider, you're getting a little more cosmic love, universal love. And as you open it up higher, you're getting a little more high frequency divine love, love of the angels, the masters. Give yourself permission to play with your crown chakra just let it adjust a little wider, a little higher. So you find what is comfortable for you at this moment. <laughs> and invite all the beautiful highest frequency of love to come flowing in through the crown chakra. Black cat is jumping around on the roof. Just as I said, crown chakra, the cat jumped Bam, right above me. If you feel any pain or pressure in your head, your forehead, behind your eyes, acknowledge it, give it permission to resolve itself. This is a very natural action on your body to protect you from like, what is this foreign energy coming at me that I don't normally work with? Just like if someone taps you on your shoulder from behind, you kind of jump a little bit. It's, your body's just a little startled, a little self-protective. So whatever pain, pressure, discomfort you feel, acknowledge it. Thank you for caring so much about you and your well-being and give it permission to resolve itself. 
you'll find your body's very good at saying, oh, okay, I get to relax. I'm good with that. Let's bring in all that divine cosmic love. All of this should be a very free flowing activity. Any pain or pressure, invite it to communicate with you, self express and resolve itself. There's no need for discomfort here. As we are, have our crown chakra open high, wide, whatever is comfortable, the energy is flowing in down to the root chakra, open so deep and spread wide. All the beautiful sacred love flowing in. With all of this love flowing in, filling your body, you'll notice some of it flows through your body and some of it just emanates out. So anything that comes near you has two choices. It can either come into love and become a total being of love, or it can go away. By inviting divine love to fill you, flow through you, and emanate out, you become your own divine protection. People who master this skill have the ability to go into any space and only goodness surrounds them. You can walk into the middle of a battlefield and everyone will either absorb your love, put down their weapons, and feel love, or they will move back to get away from you. So people who master this skill, give yourself time and practice before you do that. So to make sure we are safe, look at your crown chakra, the cone opening up so high and wide. Feel the frequency up there, how very beautiful and loving it is. And call out in your mind, or out loud if you wish, someone who loves me, someone who cares about my healthiest, happiest, most joyous state of love and well-being. Someone who exists in this frequency or higher will always guide and protect me. I ask you, I call to you, please come and nestle in the top of my crown chakra so that only those who exist in your frequency on up who care about my healthiest, happiest, most joyous state of well-being and have your permission may connect in through my crown chakra and connect with me. So give yourself a moment and invite someone. It might be your guardian angel. It might be your soul. It might be any angel, ascended master, someone you knew in life. Who has passed, an animal spirit guide, whoever comes forward that you feel their frequency is right and their presence in this place is correct. Invite them to come in and be the gatekeeper of your crown chakra energy. And then allow any energy to come in, it's filtered through them down through your crown chakra to the top of your light and airy top of your head, filtering around, flowing through your mind, down through your neck, through your body. Down through your legs and your feet, deep into earth, where Mother Earth, Gaia, Pacamama, is there waiting with open arms, 
gatekeeping your root chakra, bringing in all the love, amplifying it, and sending it out to all of your nature, brothers and sisters of our planet. Give yourself a minute to let this energy flow. Feel how pure and light and loving it is. Do you feel any pain or discomfort anywhere? Acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. Or if you're in an uncomfortable position, adjust your position. Acclimate to this beautiful, loving, high-frequency energy flowing through you. If this energy feels natural to you, that's because it is. This is the sort of energy that you were created to flow with. As we continue with these classes, you'll find even higher frequency, bigger love energy that's waiting in the wings right now. So notice the energy flowing in from sacred, divine, cosmic, filtering through your gatekeeper guardian, down through your crown to the top of your head. You may need to invite your crown chakra to adjust a little if the energy is becoming too much. and It's overflowing, overfilling your head. Invite the energy to slow down a little bit or invite your crown chakra to go a little wider. Whatever is comfortable for you, or maybe a little more narrow. As we're going on with these exercises, always be aware of your crown chakra and the fact that the energy that flows through, you can invite it to adjust whenever you want so that you are always comfortable. The energy fills your mind, your third eye here in your forehead, maybe feeling a little warm or tingly. The area in the middle of your head where the crown chakra nestles to the third eye, both in the front and the back, just nestles where the pineal gland is in the center of your head that activates and sparks up, making your crown chakra and your third eye very warm, like you're wearing a halo of energy around you. Beautiful sacred divine energy flows down, filling your mind. Again, if anything becomes too much or uncomfortable, invite it to adjust itself to meet with your comfort. Fills your throat, your throat chakra, which is the seat of self expression, both externally and internally. Your throat chakra is not just how you let the world know who and what you are, but also how you let yourself know. And if your expression to the outside world is very positive and your self-expression, your self-representation is maybe a little self-abusive, your throat chakra will be out of alignment. Always invite your throat chakra to self-express in all directions through love. And as the throat chakra energy is nestled on your three heart centers, your physical heart, which sends energy into your physical body, your chakra heart, which brings divine love, in and sends it through all your organs and through your three heart centers. And then your cosmic heart, 
that connects you to your community, both physical and spiritual. These nestle your throat chakra. You give your throat chakra energy to always express with love, be it to your community out of you and to your community inside you. We go down to our heart chakras and invite all of this beautiful divine energy to flow through our body and to flow left to our physical heart where this beautiful divine cosmic love can mix with all the blood and oxygen that's pumped through your heart and send divine love into your physical body so that all of the cells, the molecules, the organs, the veins, the arteries, your meat, your muscle, your tissues, your bones and cartilage, all of it is bringing cosmic and divine love into your body. It's very healing. And this energy that's flowing down from divine and meets your heart chakra also flows to the right side of your body, to your cosmic heart. So that as you send the energy out to the world, love is flowing with it. And as you send the energy up to the divine and down to earth, love is flowing with it. All of this love supports your throat chakra, which nestles your third eye and your crown chakra. So that love is going everywhere. And all of this beautiful divine love mixed with your love flows down to your solar plexus chakra, your, your rib cage area, where normally someone might Heimlich you. Don't Heimlich yourself, just fill it with love. Your solar plexus chakra is where action happens. When you bring in all the divine energy and it filters through your, your vision, your self-expression, your love, by the time you get to your action, it's so powerful. And the solar plexus, the sacral chakra, are in a way two sides of a coin. The sacral chakra is your seat of inspiration, creativity, divine inspiration, instinct. And all of that supports your actions so that your actions may always be flowing with love and inspiration. So just invite your sacral chakra whenever it's ready to take action, to receive love, to receive inspiration, and then invite your sacral chakra to chat with you to see what kind of action it wants to take now. If you find yourself feeling in any way queasy or like you're moving around a lot or you have a little vertigo, invite your sacral, your solar plexus chakra to release some of that energy and keep it flowing down. The solar plexus chakra gets so used to sending energy outward for action, it forgets. Send it down to earth. Earth needs action. Earth needs love. Earth needs all this divine purpose. And when the energy is fully flowing and your root chakra, you might find it's expanding even more with all of this activated energy. Root chakra expands, energy goes down. You find the queasiness, the vertigo, the spins sort of calm themselves down. The energy goes down to your sacral chakra your seat of divine inspiration, your creative flow, your birthing center, your connection to your guardian angel who loves you more than anyone in all existence and has agreed to watch over you for your entire life, for many lives, possibly all your lives. 
Your guardian angel helps you plan your life and is here to help when you lose memory of who you are for eternity, your guardian angel has this memory, knows who you are, knows what you want and need, and is always helping you stay on track, stay healthy and safe. So invite your sacral chakra to absorb all of this beautiful cosmic love blowing down from your crown chakra. Just invite your sacral chakra to absorb as much as it wants. The rest just flows out or emanates. Your sacral chakra becomes very bright. You may see this energy as bright orange or like flames, fire, or sunflowers. However you see your sacral chakra, whether you see with image or with emotions or memories or thoughts, it's all spirit sight. However you see your chakra, invite it to just resonate with all the beautiful cosmic love that's flowing in. And now we call up for a gatekeeper of our crown chakra, who may be your guardian angel or maybe someone else. You say, please send my guardian angel down to me. And don't worry if your angel is your gatekeeper, your angel can manage gatekeeping and resonating with you all at once. Open up, invite your guardian angel to come down and be one with you. You may feel the energy of your angel flowing into you. You may feel your angel just coming and wrapping around you. Or you just, you may feel like your angel is here beside you or whispering in your ear. However, your angel comes in is perfect for this moment. Invite your angel invite your angel come in and connect with you. Open up you're safe. You may find there's a team here. You may find your angel is taking shape as someone that you don't expect, like a cat or a nature being or a fairy. You may have a few, an angel, a goddess, an animal, a tree, whatever comes in, whoever comes in, accept what you receive and remind them to connect with you through the highest frequency of love and the truest caring for your most joyous, healthiest state of well-being. Give yourself a minute to connect with them and have a chat.
is beautiful. Invite your friends to stay in whatever way they're comfortable with. Invite them to actually go deeper into your sacral chakra. Invite them just nestle in there. And if it feels a little cramped or uncomfortable or queasy, remember the energy is flowing. The energy is flowing and your non-physical friends don't actually take any space. You may want them to be a little more wrapped around you or just nestled in there and remind them energy is flowing. Bring your attention to your root chakra, which extends so deep and wide into earth. And again, to your crown chakra, Invite these two chakras to adjust themselves to bring optimal comfort for your ability to host your non-physical social gathering in your sacral chakra. Invite your root chakra to spread possibly a little deeper or a little wider. Invite the energy flow to go a little more so. Invite your crown chakra to auto adjust. All that beautiful cosmic love to come flowing in and feel as this wonderful divine love flows through your body and hits your sacral chakra. What happens now that you're so connected with your divine friend and guardian? Invite your root chakra that is so beautifully stable, flowing to support your sacral chakra. To give it not just physical support, but energy support. So all this wonderful grounded connection is now very much in contact with and full support of and feeding to your sacral chakra, your seat of inspiration, your instinct. Invite all of this to charge up your whole body. Feel the energy of this flowing through your whole being of grounded inspiration, flowing with divine love. Invite your body and your energy centers to adjust. You may even feel like your entire body is now sacral chakra supported by the entire planet earth or you may feel any other variation whatever is natural for you to feel if anything is uncomfortable give it permission to resolve and give your energy permission to adjust And now, with your energy adjusted, powerful, invite your guardian angel to connect with you. See what happens with your sacral chakra, which you may feel at this point has enveloped other parts of your body. You may find your heart chakra suddenly opening up. You may find your guardian angel is communicating with you in a different way. Whatever happens, filled with love and caring for you, 
open up. Give yourself a minute to chat with your earth supported, divine love flowing, internal existing sacral chakra, you know, founded angelic communication. Hey, ask your guardian angel or whomever else is with you at this moment, if they have any message to share with you before you start drifting back to physical. Perhaps a message, perhaps a gift or a hug or a kiss. You may feel at this point your energy is already beginning to slow down to a little more of a trickle. You may find your crown chakra just very naturally returning closer to the top of your head and your root chakra just relaxing a little. If the top of your head feels any pressure or ache or pain right now, um, give it permission to relax. We've just done a very strong exercise and, you know, it's like after working out with weights, you're like, oh my God, I'm a little sore or tired. Just give, you know, you might want to rub your head a little bit just to get a little more physical energy back in there and help everything reacclimate. You might want to rub your belly a little bit. So can you sort of reconnect with your body? You know, uh, give yourself a little body rub belly pats and invite all the energy to sort of shift back into being one with physical. You may not even have realized like how non-physical you were until now when you're returning. You're like, suddenly I feel so compact. And your hand started zapping gold crystal. That is so cool. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, that happens sometimes uh, where the energy is like doing cool things. And, um, and you guys like feel welcome to share any questions or like funky details uh, of your experience because you know, the more we share with each other, the more we all know, oh, okay, so my really, really weird experience was normal and natural. Good, because trust me, they were. <laughs> Some of you may have seen my necklace, like those of you who see energy, may have seen my necklace like lighting up, doing crazy things. So here's something fun and weird. This necklace was given to me by a 2,500-year-old Buddhist nun from Thailand. Um, and I met her when she gave me the riddle, what does a 4,000 year old Hindu monk, a 2,500 year old Buddhist nun, Buddha, 
and Jesus have in common. And her life is actually the uh, story of the whole exercise, like of all the lessons we're doing. They began with Doa, who is the one who taught me how to work all the energy centers that I'm sharing this knowledge with you. And um, one of the books I'm writing, Harness Your Inner Fire, is her uh, biography, autobiography, because she kind of channels her story through me and filled with all the exercises that we're doing now. So some of you may have seen Doa here. She was very active. She's, she's still here. <laughs> she's very active whenever I teach these classes. Uh, so that's my weird experience that I had uh, an ancient Buddhist nun uh, just having so much fun through this exercise. Um, I'm going to take a look at some of your questions. Uh, oh, Bonita, I'm so glad you were here. Thank you. And let's... Um, so, Crystal, you asked, can there be more than one? Yes, yes. Um, sometimes when you call to your guardian angel for help with a matter, they will bring helpers. <laughs> so, uh, here's a great example. When I need to clean my house, because I do not enjoy housework, um, I will, I chat with my guardian angel every night before I go to sleep. I chat with my guides, my guardians, but definitely my guardian angel. And I say, tell them, like, chat about the day and what we're going to be doing the next day. So when I have to do housework, I say, tomorrow I have to do housework. I would appreciate some help. And then the next morning when I wake up and I'm lying in bed, and I'm in that great dozy hitting the snooze alarm state, I chat with, again with my guides and guardians. I do the same, sending root chakra, crown chakra, any one of the frequency of, and you know, I've been doing this for a number of years, so um, I set my, you know, bar usually at like the uh, ascended masters or, you know, the like. Um, and uh, and I was like, okay, guardian angel, remember we're going to do housework today. And then I'm like, who have you brought along? And I look, and I'm like, wow who are those fairies over there? Who are these like little blue angels? And my guardian angel go, oh yeah, no, they're cleaning fairies and cleaning angels. They're going to help. And sometimes there's like a whole crowd of beings out there. Sometimes I'm like, oh, what's with all that? And they're like, oh, the Galactic Collective came in today to help out with whatever. So you may call for your guardian angel, but you might get more than that because your guardian angel is bringing in support or uh, your frequency has finally opened you up to meet certain guides or guardians or friends of the non-physical who've been waiting for your frequency to get there. Um, so anyway, when I do housework then, I got this whole brigade helping. I still have to do the housework, but I'll tell you, it is like, you know, I just wipe the counter with the dust wipe and everything comes up. I go forward with the vacuum and everything sucks up like all of my housework is better than i can do on my own and much quicker because there i have to do the work but they make sure the work is super effective um so uh yeah you never know who's going to come in when you call to your angel um let's see happy easter happy easter lucia and jeremiah Love my microphone. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'd be uh, And yeah, I think that's it for you guys. Feel welcome. Oh, there's a lot more here. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Nazi. I'm so happy to share this with you all. And Kelly, you said, my guardian, I called in to sit. My your dog that passed, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, sometimes um, animals that we love who passed, um, sometimes animals come into our life 
just like people, it's a one-off or, you know, it's just, you happen to just have a natural affinity for each other. But some animals, um, they'll find, they're like, you know what? I really like you, human. I want to incarnate with you a lot. So when you do past life regression, you're like, my dog is in my life again. My cat is in my life again. My horse is in my life again. These things happen. Uh, those of you who knew Lord Snaggletooth, my, my dog, he normally enjoyed incarnating as a big dog. This dog, this life that he was in uh, was his last life. And actually his biography is in the book I'm finishing right now, uh, Are You Ascending to Master, which is all about all of us and like, what the heck is happening to us and the planet right now? Um, but he was originally a horse. He was long ago a war horse and then um, later started incarnating as a dog. Now he's done with incarnating and he's in the ascended master realm. Uh, I have been invited to chat with him a couple of times and I'll tell you, it takes a lot of work for me to get my frequency where it needs to be to be allowed to connect with him now. Um, but he's, uh, uh, ascended master realm is like a whole other thing. He's like back to kindergarten for us being an ascended master. But um, he's been showing me and some of the other masters because it requires like a group of his teachers to help him hold space to connect with me, showing me what some of the other like masters of this dimension are doing to help us heal our planet. Um, so we'll be learning about that probably in June, I think. We'll be at the point where we can start connecting with that in this class series. So uh, please join me on normally Saturdays <laughs> um, uh, in the morning and Wednesday evenings uh, for like receiving messages because when all of that comes together, it will culminate with us, you know, doing some cool stuff that I'm so happy to share. Let's see. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. And um, so this Wednesday evening, if you join, um, we've already had our first learning to scrying and receive. <laughs> Wonderful tones. Um, so you can go back here and watch uh, the where we were working with Crystal Ball. This coming Wednesday night, uh, we're going to work with, again, a cup of water, so you do not need to have a crystal ball. Uh, we'll have a cup of water, a clear plastic cup, cup or a glass is great, but even a teacup is fine. And I'm going to show you how to start going into other dimensions through looking at the cup of water uh, or inviting other dimensions to appear before you in a cup of water. We'll also have a bowl, and if you have any pebbles or anything to put in the bowl and like um, coffee grinds or tea or flour or a spice to sprinkle on the surface, uh, we're going to play with that. Um, and we'll play with our pendulums again, which can also be a necklace or a microphone on the string, any weighted object on, on a string. I'll type up all of this in my, uh, you know, separately. So you guys don't have to go, wait, what did she say? Oh my God, what, what? Um, I'll, re I'll make the list. Um, and again, remember, you do not need a crystal ball to do crystal ball scrying. Um, I mean, it's fun with a crystal ball, but all these other tools are also fun and they're all the same. Uh, you know, when I studied, um, Australian Aborigine shamanism. They didn't have crystal balls and they were like the best seers I've ever seen. So, uh, and no, I haven't been to Australia, just to say. Um, I've just been lucky enough to uh, study with, um, oh, I guess, <laughs> people who do not want their the public to know about them, but they're awesome. And, uh, 
that's why I'm learning the didgeridoo now to be like better connected with that. Okay, um, Linda, I will tell my mom hi, and we love seeing your Facebook posts, so thank you. All right, you guys, thank you so much, and, um, you know, this week, practice your chakra work. Uh, go back and watch this meditation, or um, if you go to my YouTube channel and type in uh, Harness Your Inner Fire, I've got a lot of videos because I've been teaching this class. They're not well organized, but they're there. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. I love you, and remember... Just flow with energy. Anytime you're feeling uncomfortable or queasy, flow with energy. I will see you all later. Bye.